Christ. We thank the Lord for the favor of his presence this morning. We yes. thank you that God yes. has been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Yes. It is no that mistake. It is no accident, rather, it's but by the goodness of God that yes. we are here and we are blessed. Yes. Amen. Isn't it good to be blessed? Yes. Yes. Isn't it good Amen. to be blessed? That's yes. right. It's yes. good to be blessed. Amen. It's good to be kept. It's yes. good to be sheltered. It's good to be protected. It's, yes. good. it's good because God is good. And mm -hmm. God is so gracious to bless us and yes. to afford us what we need for whatever we need. God is good. Yes. Amen. Amen. God is good. God is good. I'm so grateful to God. I thank God for all that the Lord does and how that God is still in charge of everything, though it looks like things are out of control sometimes. I'm not. God is still in control. Yes, he is. And I'm so glad he's sovereign and doesn't have to apologize to anybody. Oh, God is still God and does what he does, allows what he allows. And yet, God is still able to keep us yes, he in is. the hollow mm -hmm. of his hand. Yes. Amen. You might have triumphs in your life. You have had tragedies in your life. Mm -hmm. But God is still yet faithful. I'm glad about it. I'm glad. I'm glad he's not only the God of the daylight. Come on. He's Amen. the God of the nighttime. Yes. He's the God yes. of whatever we need for whatever we need. That's right. And I'm glad about it. That's why you don't have to be ashamed going before God to ask you, talk with him, and just get closer to him for your particular need. Because God has seen it all and he knows it all. You can't surprise him. You can't jump out of a closet and say, boo, and God will jump. God sees you. In your darkest place, he sees you in your brightest place. Yeah. I'm glad about that. So God, so he doesn't come judge you. He comes with mercy. He comes with yeah. grace. He comes with favor so that we can have relationship with him. Isn't that good to know relationship yeah. with God? Oh, great God we serve. God is truly a mighty, mighty God. Yes. If you have your Bibles handy, we're going to ask if you would. Turn to the 55th chapter of Isaiah. Bless the Lord. And we thank God for his word. And we thank God for the ability to speak what we believe God has said. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that our God is a speaking God. Amen. He's not dead. He's not wrapped around our neck. He's not hanging on in some closet, nor is he hanging as an ornament. <laughs> God is alive and well yes, on the yes. inside of all who believe yes. in him. <clears throat> Isaiah 55 this is actually a very familiar text. Oftentimes it's used to show God's ability to call all men, women, boys, and girls into a right relationship with him through his son, Jesus Christ. It's like a clarion call, if you will. It's a shout out by God to say that, listen, all, oh, come on, come on, come on. I got what you need. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And God will meet you at the point of your need. 55th chapter of Isaiah, beginning at the first verse. Ho, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters, and <coughs> he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat, yea, come buy wine and milk without. Money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me here. And your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Yes. Behold, I have given him for his witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. Behold, I have given, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and a nation that knew thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Mm -hmm. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Yeah. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his Word. If I might use for a word this morning, as I was thinking, we thought about God 
Amen. God in view. But I'd like to make it a little more personal and say God in my view. God in my view. I'm so glad that I can vision God. I can see God. I can make uh, the right choices in my life so that God is visible. So that God is more attainable, accessible as a result of my obedience to him. So I'd like to make it personal and say God in my view. When you look at the 55th chapter of Isaiah, it deals with the sovereign call of Almighty God to mankind, whether you be male or female, Jew or Greek, whatever your status, whatever your life, uh, God is saying, listen, I'm calling all them that will come. Amen. I'm glad that God is not particular. I'm Amen. glad that God Amen. determines that all men stand in need of relationship with him. Amen. The Bible says in um, Romans 3.23, all have sinned yeah. and come short of the glory of God. I'm glad that included me. Yes. I'm glad that included you. For had it not been for the Lord reaching out and saying, all you have to do is come. Can you understand now how that God told Peter when he was walking on the water and Peter thought he saw a ghost and the Lord just said to him, listen, all I want you to do is come. Mm -hmm. And that's the call that God has given to all humanity is that humanity would come to him. Yes. He said, hold everyone that thirsted. In other words, you're, you're wasting time if what you're, what you're drinking or what is satisfying you, or should I say what you're indulging in, is not satisfaction. Because the only one that can give you satisfaction is Christ Jesus alone. Amen. So God reaches out and says, come, 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 come on to me, yeah. come to me. Amen. I'm here for you. There's no need for you not to come because I'm standing here as a shepherd speaking to sheep. Yeah. And if you are hearing my voice, he said, harden not your hearts. He said, whatever you need to do is come. You ever had to get somewhere fast? You ever had to make your way to a place that it seemed like you were doing everything you could to get there? God said, that's where I want you to come to me. I want there to be some anticipation in your step. I want you to lift your steps up. I want you to make your way and be determined that I'm going to come to you. Amen. See, I think God is a little offended when we don't come to him. I think he's offended when we think we can handle it and we don't need him now. Oh, Lord, but when the room gets dark and stuff begins to go haywire, I don't think we have a problem saying, Lord, don't have a problem with that. So he says, listen, before that happens, he said, the necessity of this is that you know you can come. Amen. You can come however it is. And for whatever it is, you can come. Yeah. I'm glad about that. Yeah. Because everybody don't receive you. That's right. Uh-huh. Amen. You can have friends that are your friends when everything's going well. But when everything starts to break loose and stuff begins to go raggedy and foul and goes to a situation where they don't seem to understand you anymore, don't talk to you like they used to talk to you, then your friends begin to back up and they don't come around you anymore. But God's not like that. God said, listen, if I tell you to come, I'm going to keep myself around you. I'm going to make myself present. I'm Jehovah Shaman. God is present. I'm going to be in your place. I'm going to be in your face. I'm going to be in your situation because I told you to come. Amen. Because I told you to come, I meant it. Amen. I meant it. I meant it. I wasn't just talking. You ever have folks say, yes, anytime you're there, you stop by. <laughs> and then when you stop by, they look like somebody broke in their house. <laughs> Amen. God ain't like that. They say, come. God said, come. I don't care when you call me. Come, I don't care what time of night it is. Yeah. If you feel like calling my name, come on, I'm here for you. Yeah. Yeah. I seen you when you was at your top, and I seen you when you was at your worst. Yeah. So why don't you come? Amen. Why don't you come? So this was a general call to all humanity to come. Make themselves available <laughs> to the presence and the power of Almighty God. Yeah. I'm glad that God calls us to come. I'm glad that he extends his invitation to everybody. 
So nobody will be without excuse to say, God didn't call me. God never spoke to me. I never heard it. No, because he says, come. Come ye that are thirsty. Everyone that's thirsty, he said, come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Why? Because God is in my view. And when God is in my view, God is saying, come on. Amen. Come on. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. You don't have to come with money. You don't have to come with price. All you got to do is come. And I'll make it what it needs to be. Amen. Glory to God. He said, come on. Come on. I understand why the woman at the well in St. John 4 and 13 was there. She thought she had, amen, the upper hand on Jesus. And she said, listen, I'm at Jacob's well. And because I'm, I'm, I'm of the family and the lineage of Jacob, even though I'm being Samaritan, I'm still a half-breed, but my father was Jacob. And I can still claim rights to, to being a part of the family of Jacob. And this is Jacob's well. Yeah. Jesus said to her, he said, if you drink from this well, he said, you're first. He said, if you draw water well from this well, water from this well, he said, you're first. But he said, the water that I give you, yeah. on, he said, you'll never thirst. Yeah. He said, actually, the water that I give you will be like life everlasting. Yeah. It'll, it'll satisfy that which you need for all eternity. Yeah. That's why when you first get saved and, and God begins to reveal himself to you, first thing you say is, why it took so long? But God has a season yes, yes. to meet you where you are. Yes. See, it's unfortunate, but a lot of times we got to get to the point that we're just like the prodigal son. We got to get to the end of the line and the end of our road. Yes. I heard one songwriter say, he said, listen. He said, when I get to the end of my room, I'm going to tie another knot. But I've been to the end of my room and didn't have no more room to tie. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. And found myself saying, Lord, if you don't do it. Oh, if you don't. Oh, Lord. God, if you don't come now. Yeah. And if you don't step in, there'll be no tomorrow and there'll be no now. And God, by his infinite wisdom, yeah. will say, into the worst of the worst. Glory to God. And begin to change some stuff that only God can do by saying, come to me. If he spoke into eternity, and eternity existed by his very word, I know God don't have a problem telling me to come. Telling me, listen, you keep me in your view, not your rear view. And I'll make you happy. I'll make you satisfied. I'll make you contented. Because I said come. It's God's responsibility really for the relationship. Because we were in darkness and he still is calling us to light. Glory to God. God in my view. Glory to God. The woman at the well was told by Jesus that if you drink this water, this water. it's going to spring up unto everlasting life. Yeah. Ha have you ever been in the doldrums and been a little disgusted, but you knew you got, you were in the hand of God, and God seemingly caused something to spring up in your spirit, yeah. and it's like water of refreshing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Even though your situation hasn't changed, yeah. up on the inside, yeah. something is going on that there's a revival on the inside. Yes. I'm happy here with Jesus alone. Uh -huh. I know it don't look like I got it like I should have it. I know it don't look like everything's going well. But on the inside, something is stirring in my soul. Yes. 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 It's causing me to be happy. Yes. All in the midst of a bad Everything's going to be 
be all right. And they start the song off real low. And they start off low, and as it began to progress and progress, by the time it reached the climax, you knew without a shadow of a doubt that that thing which you were believing God for was going to come to pass because God would stir revival in your spirit. And you would see God as you've never seen yes, him before. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever prayed till you got to the point that you couldn't say another word? Yeah, yeah. And God would stir something in your spirit yeah. where you just begin to cry for yeah. no reason. But yeah. it really wasn't for no reason. Right. God was saying, listen, yeah. I'm going to stir something up in your spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Let you know I'm still God. Yeah. I'm still sovereign in the midst of your crisis. Yeah. I know you're going through a crisis, but I'm still sovereign. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, everyone that thirsted, he said, come. Who, if you're thirsted, he said, come. Oh. Amen, amen. Even the devil tried to step to Jesus when Jesus was in the wilderness and came to him and began to tempt him. And Jesus said, listen, no, you can't tempt me. Right. He said, every man will not live by bread alone. He said, listen, I understand you need food and clothes. He said, but there's something greater than food and clothing. He said, every man shall live by the word of God. Mm. Because when I have the word of God, I can wait for food and clothes. Right. Because the word of God will give me the sustaining power that even my hunger seems like I lost my appetite. So, oh, but I've developed a new taste. And the taste of Jesus is sweet. David said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes, yes, mm. yes. That's right. That's right. I might be hungry in my flesh. Yes. Oh, but I'm satisfied and full in my spirit. Oh, yeah. Whew, glory. Come, on. come, come, come. Thirsting, bubbling. Oh, why? Because that's the way it is with God. God is able to satisfy you. Yes. The sure mercies of David. God is able to do for you what you can't do for yourself. Yes. The Lord will keep, help you to keep him in your view. Amen. And let you know that in spite of your situation and circumstance, I'm still God. Yes. In spite of how desperate it gets and how hopeless it seems, I'm still God. Yes. Jesus told Mark that even at the tomb, Lazarus had been dead. Yes. Going on three days, four days, he had been dead. Yes. And Jesus said, listen, I'm here and I want you to understand that, that even though he's dead, bye, bye, bye. you ever had something dead that God revived? You ever had something that nobody said would be anything, would ever come to anything? That job that they told you about was never going uh, 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 to come to come to be. They told you this would not happen, that would not happen. But something dead. That's why God likes to work with dead stuff. God will take stuff that everybody else has cast off and kicked to the side. And God told uh, Malchus, said, "Listen, understand this. I know your brother is dead, but if you believe." In me, though he's dead, yet will he live again. And if you believe in me, he will never die. Because of life. And when I tell him to come, when he went to the grave and called Lazarus' name, Lazarus couldn't do nothing but come. Why? Because he's alive. He's the thirsty. He's the refreshing. He's the sustenance we need to be sustained in our spirits. Glory. Come on. He told him, come. Glory to God. And he came. Glory to God. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, yes, though he were dead. God said, listen, it don't matter whether it's alive or dead. I'm able to speak life into it. When I say, glory to God. When I say, come. It's got to move. It's got to move. It's got to move. And the more and more God does it, the more and more he's in my view. The more and more I see what God can do. Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. I, listen, I, I, I don't serve him necessarily because of all he does. I serve him because of who he is. And because of who he is, he does what he does. Yes, yes, yes. That's worship. Uh -huh. That's worship. God will have to do another thing for me. I'll still worship him. God, if you never do another thing, yes. I'll still worship yes. you. Because you're worthy to be praised. Yes. Mm. Yes. God in my view. Oh, do you see him now? Oh, yes. Do you see him? Yes. Do you see him? Even though you don't have to feel it to see him. Oh, yes, sir. You can be, be seemingly dead in your flesh. Yes. You can seemingly be dead in your emotions. And yet God will give you a bubbling in your spirit. Yes. 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 You ever been drained? 
And God let a rushing of his presence over my life to let me know I'm still here. Come oh, on. Yes, yes. Come yes. on, don't you back up. Come oh, on. Lord. I know what the doctor said, but come on. Yes. Yes. You keep coming. Yes. Glory to God. Thank you. Amen. Why? Because of God and decided me. Yeah. There is no other. Amen. Jesus, Jesus actually brought it home in um, St. Matthew, St. Matthew 11, 28. He said, come unto me all you that Basically, the same clarion call yeah. that was given prophetically in Isaiah 55, Jesus gave to the Jews again, said, come unto me all you that labor. And they rejected him, but he said, listen, come unto me all you that labor. Yeah. And a heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. He gave them the same call because he wanted them to know that the only way they could get to God yeah. was if they came. Amen. Amen. No other way. No other way. Amen. God is awesome. Yes, he is. God is powerful. Yes. Amen. And his power is all powerful. Amen. You know, God, God doesn't dispense it. Amen. When, when God shows up, shows he shows up, up with power. Yes. It's not like he shows up with, with less power. He shows up with all power. Yes. So God is all powerful all the time. Yes. Lord. He can't And I'm so glad he's all powerful. And the interesting thing is, the fact that God is all powerful, the interesting part is, what makes him known is that we hear him. Yeah. See, a lot of folks talk about God, how powerful God is, but they never walk as if they heard him. Amen. So as much as God is powerful, yes. God is also audible. Yes, sir. In other words, we serve a speaking yes. God. Yes, oh, yeah. Now understand this, when Moses was on Mount Horeb in the third chapter of Exodus, and God met him at 80 years old, on. Uh -huh, on the back side of a mountain, yes, amen, dealing with the Midianites, in the family of the Midianites, he watching sheep. Yeah. And God's power came in so strong uh -huh. that the bush where God resided was burning but not consumed. Yes. He's all powerful. Yes. There's no way something can be burning and not consumed. Yes. But what made it more powerful is that the bush spoke. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. The bush spoke. Okay. Amen. See, it's a lot to say, I see the power of God. But if you never heard, oh, yes, sir. If you never heard about him, his power means nothing. Yes. But when you hear you can testify to the fact that God is real. Yes. He'll make himself known. Yes. How do I know that? Because God called out from a bush yes. and said, Moses, so God knows you by your name. Yes. And then God has been audible. You know what it is in football when you do audible calls? Uh -huh. uh, you got a playbook. But amen, every now and then God lets the quarterback call his own play. So God said, listen, I'm the quarterback. And sometimes I got to speak in your spirit for you to know. Because sometimes we don't get the game plan. And God said, I got to speak to you to let you know I'm still all powerful. Let you know it. Let you know it. Let them know it. Amen. You ain't been reading, but God's still speaking. Oh, yes, I know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm in the Bible every moment. And every time I'm walking by, it's, oh, I got the daily bread open. Oh no! Sometimes I'm sleeping in the bed. Sometimes my head is sleeping in the bread. Oh yes, sir. Yeah. My father used to work so hard. He'd fall asleep in his plate. He'd get home at five o'clock. Mom would have the plate on the table. Mm -hmm. And we'd go downstairs and wake him up, and his head would be in his plate. He'd be so tired. I've gotten that tired before where you couldn't eat. Okay. I've gotten that tired before where you couldn't even sleep. Yes, right. And God will yeah. recognize your fatigue yeah. as well as your victories. Yeah. So in your fatigue, yeah. God will speak audibly to you. Yeah. If he got to say wake up, you'll get up. Yeah. If he got to say move on, you'll walk ahead. Because yeah. God will speak. Yeah. See, he does it all so you can come to him. Yes. Glory to God. 
That's why you can't hide from it. You can dress up like somebody else today. <laughs> but God knows who you are. Amen. 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 He knows who you are. Well, I got him in my view. I, I see him. God like this. God doing this. Uh-huh. I see him. Yeah, okay, that's, that's what God doing. Amen. I see him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right there, I got you. I got you in my sight. Amen. We was in the military. You had crosshairs when you would line up with scope. Amen. They tell you, you get it right in the crosshairs. That's when you do what you do. Amen. God said, listen, I got you right in my crosshairs. I see you. I know where you are. That's why I want you to come. I want you to come. Moses heard the voice of God in the midst of a bush that was not consumed yet burning. Woo! Glory! Mm. Moses said for the first time, I know there's a God. Yeah. Amen. Amen! And God said, I'm going to use you even though you feel insignificant. Well, That's what God will do. Like I said, he'll take nothing and make you feel like something yeah. because he's in it. Yeah. God in my view, I can see him now. I know it. I know there's a call on my life. There's a call on your life. If God has spoken to you, there's a call on your life. Amen. God just don't want to bless you. He want to lead you. Amen. 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 He want to lead you. He want to guide you and direct you. Through the counsel of his will. Amen. He said, you done tried and fixed it yourself for a long time. Wouldn't let me handle it. And it seems like it is messing up every other time. You think if you bumped your head one time, you wouldn't bump your head again. Amen. But we got some I think we actually put helmets on our head. Amen. When we keep bumping. <laughs> and God said, when you get tired of all that, he said, I, I, I want to direct you by the counsel of my will. Yeah. He told Moses, he said, you want to leave both. Moses said, no, I ain't. He said, yes, you are. By your hand. Uh-huh. I'm going to use you. That's right. And by the hand of God over your own life, God said, I'm going to use you. Yes. Mm. All you got to do is come. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh. Amen, amen. And God is awesome. Yes. And he yes. makes himself known. And more than awesome, he's audible. Jesus. And he speaks to yes. our spirits. Yes. Glory, 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 glory. Look what God told Israel. He sought out Israel. He looked for Israel. Israel couldn't hide from God. God had to seek them out. God said, listen, in Isaiah 43 and 1, he said, listen, but now, he said, but now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. God told Israel, listen, I created you, I made you, I brought you forth. And because I formed you, he said, when you walk in the water, it's not going to overflow you. If you go through the fire, you won't be burned. Why? Because you belong to me. Yeah. I called you. I made you family. I made you kin. Isn't that good about God? God makes us family. Yeah. God makes us relationship. Yeah. Amen. A room full of strangers, yet we're all related because God makes us family. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. What a mighty God we serve. God in my view. God in my eyesight. I see him as I've never seen him before. I follow after because he is indeed God and there's no other God like our God. No other. No other God. David declares in Psalms 25 and 14, he, lists, he says, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. God says, because you reverence me. Yeah. Understand this. God is not calling you out of darkness into the marvelous night not to share himself with you. Yeah. God said, listen, I didn't call you just to have you next to me. I called you so that we could have a relationship and I can speak into your life. Yeah. Amen. The secret of the Lord. You want to know a secret? You want to know something about God? The secret of it is the fear of God. When you reverence God, God unfolds his covenant. He unfolds his plan. Why? Because he can trust you now. Mm -hmm. And it takes a while because every now and then, God will just take you through situations which we 
called growth and grace calls you to grow up in him and God continually reveals his will for your life. You'll know now what you didn't know before because God made it known. Amen. When you look back over your life Amen. and you think things over, Amen. the song says, I know I've been blessed. I know God did it. I know God made it happen. But I had to come over some stuff Amen. in order to recognize how not only how good God is, sure. but who God is. Who he is. Amen. So he says the secret of the Lord yeah. is with them that fear him. Yeah. If I want to know what is the mind of God, respect him, reverence him, worship him. Yeah. And as I worship him, he unfolds his covenant. Yeah. David understood, understood it. 23rd Psalm, he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. David was a young man. Yes. And he went before a giant called Goliath. And David knew this much, that God was not to be played with. God was not to be charged foolishly. Yeah. God was not to be taken for granted. David comes to his brothers showing up with a meal to feed them while they were on the battlefield. He shows up, and all but the armies of the Israelites is in fear of the Philistines because they have a giant named Goliath. The man was over nine foot tall. All David knew was that the giant had offended the integrity of God. Yes. That's all. David did this. David understood he couldn't fight him with his own might. Come on. David recognized that the man, he was no match for Goliath. Amen. And we know that sometimes even in our own life. This situation, the circumstance we're in, I'm no match for it. Come on. But because it violates glory to God, the integrity of who God is, I know that God will have my back as well as my front. So David says, listen, I know what we got to do. We can't allow this uncircumcised Philistine, this ungodly individual, we can't allow this giant to step on what God has given us. Has, has the enemy ever tried to step on what God has given you? He stood up under the might of Almighty God. He said, listen, all I got is a, is a, is a slingshot. All I got is three smooth stones. He said, listen, this is all I got because this is how I operate. I'm a young boy. I didn't bring an Uzi. Uh -huh. I didn't bring a 45. All I bought was three small stones. Oh! stood up and he said I come against you not in the might of David right. uh, no 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 I don't come in the might of David he said I come in the might of the God of Israel yeah. and as he wound up to throw his slingshot if you will the Bible says that he threw it and, and by the spirit of God it was directed to one place because if you knock out the head you knock out the body yeah. and God give you the fortitude and the strength to stand up against your enemies, to stand in the might of God and bring them down on behalf of the glory of God. Amen. So you don't have to worry about no weapon. Oh yes sir, form against you because God will hold it back because he's God. Yes. That's right. Glory. Amen. glory. David did it. He had God in his view as a young man. A young man. Couldn't wear Saul's armor, couldn't even hold the sword, nor the shield. All David knew was this. How can you let this individual offend our God? Mm. You ever stand up for God? I mean, and you said what you said, then you have to sit down and look at yourself in the mirror to see if it was really you. <laughs> Because God will give you the, the power and the strength to stand for what is right. Yeah. Yes, he will. That's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of God is we serve. God is speaking. And I'm so glad to all humanity right now. In Hebrews, it tells us, glory to God. Hebrews 1, it talks that he spoke through the prophets. Amen. He spoke to all them that had come before him. But now he speaks through his son, Jesus Christ. 
Yeah. That's right. His son, Jesus Christ. And this is Hebrews, um, bless the Lord. Hebrews 1 and 2. Bless God. It said, Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom he has made, he has made the world. Yeah. God said, listen, I'm no longer speaking through the prophets. I'm no longer speaking, amen, even by demonstration, but rather I'm speaking by my son in whom I have sent. Yes, when you look at the entire text of, from the first chapter of 55th chapter of, I mean, the 55th chapter of Isaiah, the first through the uh, fifth verse deals with the, God's universal call for man to come so that we might have God in our view. If you look at the, uh, 55 and 6, it says, Seek ye the Lord mm -hmm. while he may be found. Mm -hmm. Call upon him while he is there. God commands us. He commands us. He wants us to keep him in our view, so God commands us to seek God because he can be found. That's literally what it means. Not may be found, but he can be found. So the time to long for God, the time to reach out for God, the time to need God is now. Amen. We're living in the gospel age. We're living in the New Testament time. We're living in the time now that God is available to them that say, come. All right. Amen. To them that reach out, God will reach out. To them that say yes, God will say yes. Glory, 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 glory. Amen. God basically says, call out. You know, literally it says, to them that are near, it says, Seek ye, Lord, while I may be found. Call upon him while he is near. The word call upon him literally means, Help! Call out! Amen. It means to yell out. Amen. It means to say, Lord, come. Come, 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 come. Amen, amen, amen. When I think of God in my view, when I think of God in my eyesight, when I think of the presence of God in my life, I think of three actions, basically being persuaded by God, being persistent with God, and being in pursuit of God, being persuaded by God. Jesus knew everywhere he went that multitudes would follow him, yeah. and, he ne and he never needed to be reminded of his sovereignty nor his ability, because he was God all the time, yes. all the time. He never had to be reminded. Jesus knew what he had to do. Yeah. Multitudes would follow him because they longed to be where he was and to know what he knew. Hmm. How many of them came up to him and asked him questions? I'm not talking about the Pharisees and the Sadducees. I'm talking about the common man who would come up and ask him questions. Lord, can you heal me? Lord, can you touch me? Even people who are outcast in their own community, by their own nation, say, listen, if I but just touch the hem of his garment, if I can just get a peek of it, I'll climb a tree if necessary. I'll go through a crowd if necessary. I'll act crazy so I can get his attention if necessary. Oh, blind Bartimaeus was blind, but he could holler. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. He hollered for a minute. Even the disciples basically said, shut up! Yeah. You're worrying us. You're bothering us. You're disturbing us. But understand this. When you really want to seek after God, you don't mind disturbing nobody. Listen, I might get loud praying, but I'm trying to get in touch with God. If that bothers you, you better find another seat. But I'm going to call his name. Uh-huh. Glory to God.
calling on Jesus in spite of the fact that it looked like they really meant it. Let me say that again. There were those that didn't have a problem calling on Jesus in spite of the fact that it looked like they really meant it. I remember folk running to the altar in the middle of the service because the word stirred them or the song stirred them fall to their knees and say, God have mercy. I'm not telling you something I heard. I'm telling you something I saw. Why? Because there is a longing in our humanity that wants to reconnect with God. And if you haven't been connected, that longing hasn't been satisfied. But once it's satisfied, it'll keep you thirsting and thirsting and thirsting for more, for more, for more. Amen. Lord. He said it will spring up unto everlasting life. It'll cause you to be persuaded in your mind. Enough to be persuaded in your mind that you're persistent enough to go after him. It doesn't matter whether you're convinced. All I have to know is that I'm convinced who he is. I'm persuaded. I've got a made up mind. You want to grow up in God? You want to walk in the things of God? Have a made up mind. Listen, I don't care who don't go, I'm going. What's the day? Sunday, I go to church. You go golf. You can watch TV. You can stay on. But this is what I do on Sunday. I go to church. I'm persuaded in my mind. I'm made up. Yes. That's right. Made up, persuaded. And because I'm persuaded, I'm persistent. In other words, God, I believe you so much. I expect so much that you're going to do and be God in my life. Yes. yes. Listen. He saved us. We didn't save him. Amen. And because he saved us, he deposited himself in us yes. so that the yearning and the longing in our soul can only be satisfied with the connection. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. So there's got to be glory to God, a made up mind. Amen. A made up mind. A made up mind. Are you persuaded in your mind this morning? Are you persuaded? I love the fact we've studied Job in our, in our Bible study. And Job lost everything he had. All his kids, all his wealth, all his stuff. But Job had a persuaded and a made up mind. Job said, listen, naked I came into the world. And naked I'm going out. In other words, I came in here with nothing. And I'm going to leave here with nothing. I know you got some CDs. I know you got some bank accounts. But when you leave here, they're going to belong to somebody else. And you don't know whether it's going to be a fool or a wise person. And it really don't matter because even if it's a fool or a wise, you're not spending it. I used to love, I love that verse. You don't know who you're going to leave it to. But the point is, you ain't got no control over who you leave it to anyway. That's why they got court. That's why they got lawyers. As soon as you close your eyes, there, somebody trying to change the paperwork. Call me, they didn't really mean it. They was crazy. All they did was go to church. They didn't have good sense anyway. Amen. Don't laugh. You know it's the truth. You know it's the truth. You know it's the truth. But the point is, Job said, listen, naked I came in the world, naked I'm going out. And the Bible says in all that Job lost, he didn't charge God foolishly. In other words, whatever he lost, he didn't cuss God out. Not. Whatever he lost, he didn't cuss at God and say, I hate you not because not. of what you did. Yeah, and yeah. all that he went through, he went through some trauma and drama. Yeah. But he said, listen, in all that I'm dealing with, uh -huh. the Bible said he didn't charge God foolishly. Yes. He didn't sin in his heart, nor did he charge God as wrong in the fact that it happened in his life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Why? Because Job understood this, that the secret of the Lord mm. is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Job knew that the stuff was not the connection with God, Amen. but rather the word of God to him was the connection. Yes. Even though he lost it, he knew he wasn't lost. You ever feel like that? Even though I didn't get the job, that's all right because God is still sovereign. Amen. Amen. Think about it. You believe in God for something, you're praying for something, you're trusting God for something, and it don't happen, and God gives you peace like that's all right. That wasn't for you. I know you wanted it, I know you longed after it, but I got something better for you. Yes. And some of the stuff that we prayed for, we thank God we didn't get it today. 
some of the people we pray for in our life. We so glad they in somebody else's life, we don't know what to do. Amen. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a good response on that. <laughs> Amen. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Seek ye. Glory. Jesus proclaimed that all our needs are added to God as we seek him. Seek ye first. Uh, St. Matthew 6.33 says this. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Everything you stand in need of in the temporal as well as the spiritual will be added to you if you seek God's kingdom, his advice, his, his word. His plan, his process. Yes, when you seek yes, after God, God said, Listen, I'm going to add the stuff to you that you need. Amen. Whatever you need, I'm going to add it. Whatever. Because I'm able and I'm God. He gives insights into the kingdoms. He said, Listen, Luke 11 9, he says, And I say to you, ask and it shall be given. There you go, there you go. Be persuaded. Be persuaded enough to God, in God to ask. Amen. And he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. When I am persuaded by God, then I, I am commanded by God to ask him. Don't tell me you're so holy. Don't tell me you're so humble. And you don't ask God for a thing. That's pride. That's not humility. Amen. 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 Hey, <coughs> when we were children, if we had to eat only when we said we were hungry, we would have stopped. If they had now invited us to the table, we would have stopped. But most of the time, the table was set, that's where God is, the table was set, you know the time, and you showed up to eat. Amen. And if you didn't know what time it was, somebody would yell out the window, yell out the door, or say, listen, it's time to eat. Yeah. But if you had to do it yourself, you would have stopped. And God said, that's the way I am. He said, I set the table. And all you got to do, glory to God, is us. Why didn't you ask me? You've been to everybody. You went back to the same people who told you no last time. But you won't ask me. He commands us to ask. That's tough for the Christian to believe. That's tough for the, a Christian to digest. Is that God wants us to ask him Amen. for what we need. Yes. I'm all right. Lord, don't give me a new car. Just give me a piece of something. <laughs> you don't want a piece of something when somebody give it to you. You might take it showing some false humility, but you don't want it. Here's something. They're brushing it off. You remember a whisk room? Yeah. They're whisking the thing off. They won't wear it, but they're giving it to you. You don't want it. Oh, thank God. I could use that. You know, good way can't use it. You wait for the next trucks to come by and take it from you. <laughs> You know the truth. You know the truth. Yeah, I'll put it right back in the box with the other stuff we'll get rid of. Thank you. Oh, that's wonderful. God bless you. No, they right. Thank you. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God. Oh, I can use that. And then fill that box up just as quick and purple, right, purple heart. So God says, ask what you need. Ask. I'm commanding. Look at this now. He says, I command you. If you're persuaded in your mind that I'm God. Yes. He says, I command you to ask. And to him that asks him, look what it says here. He says, then he tells us to seek. And the fact that I'm persuaded to ask, I'm persistent enough, and he pushes me, he pushes me by his word to seek him out and not give up. Amen. Amen. Well, I, I come to church not because I made up my mind to come, but because God pushes me to come. Amen. Amen. I mean, I'm persuaded. I'm convinced he's God. But when I'm on my way, I got trouble just like everybody else. There's, there's a push in my spirit. There's, there, there's something that's driving me that's not me that lets me know that this is what you ought to do and seek out. Amen. 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 Old folks had it good. They said, I'm pressing my way. Yeah. Pressing my way. Amen. And we understood that to mean not that they were falling forward, but that God was pushing them yeah. forward. Yeah. Otherwise, you would have stayed home. Otherwise, you would have done your thing. But God pushes you yes. when you yes. pursue him. Pushes you into his presence. Whoo, glory. 
That's the kind of God we should ask him and seek him. Then he says, listen, and, and as I push you into it, he says, be, be, be ready to knock. Whatever it is, whatever you determine that I convince you of in your spirit, he says, knock. He even tells us in Revelation, he says, knock. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. But God is telling us to knock. We knock it too and say, God, this is what we stand in need of. God, this is the desire of my heart. He said, knock. Three postures here. Asking God, seeking God, and knocking. My, my. He commands us to do it. To do it. Why? Because if we have him in our view, if we see him, God said, listen, I want all your attention. Yes. Hey man, I don't, I don't want anything to be any less than it should be. Anything. I want everything about you to be about me. Woo! Glory. Somebody ought to be getting this. Everything about me ought to be about you. God says that. Seek me while you hate me. Seek me while I may be found. My, my, my. Let the unrighteous, amen, stop being unrighteous. Let the wicked turn from his way. Because if you're in the process, if you're in the mode and doing what God calls you, God will transform your life. Yes, yes. When you ask him, when you seek, and when you knock. Oh, I got him in my view, beloved. I got him in my view. I'm closing out now. There's one parable Jesus gave. And I love this because the Lord always used natural circumstances so that we might get spiritual insight yes. into the mind of God. Yes. In St. Luke 18 and 2, it says, There was in a city a judge who feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. Mm -hmm. And he would not for a while, but after a while, he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man. He said, that Yet because this woman troubles me, I will avenge her, lest her continual coming, she worry me, weary me. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust said. And, God, and, and shall not God avenge his own elect? Which cried day and night unto him, though he hear long for, though he bear long with them, I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? God says, "Listen, you want to know what real faith is?" He said, "If I can move the hand of an unjust person who doesn't fear God no man, how much more is God moved by your actions when you trust Him?" When you ask him, when you seek him, amen, when you are persistent, when you are persuaded, when you are in pursuit of God, how much more is God persuaded when you got him in your view? I got my sights on God. I'm going after God like there's no tomorrow. Why? Because if I seek him, I'll find him. Yes. Yes. Thank you. That's right. I'm going after him. I'm going after him. Whatever it takes. Amen. If I got to take something off, lay something down, that's what I'm going to do to find him. If I got to do this to do that in order to get closer to God, that's what I'm going to do. Amen. Because I know this, that when I find him, yeah. I'm going to find what I need. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. Woo, yes. I'm going to knock until God answers. That's right. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to seek him as never before until God makes himself known. He's in my view. God, I got my sights on you. Yeah. I'm not going to let you go. I'm going to be like Jacob. I'm going to wrestle with you all night if I have to. Oh, yeah. yeah. Until I hear from the Lord. That's what the folks would do. They fast. They turn their plate around. They wouldn't give in to nothing until they heard from God. Amen. But God says, listen, you want me in your view? He said, listen, seek after me. Seek on me. Call me right now where I may be found. Wow. Okay, I'm right before. I'm, 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 I'm in your eyesight. Oh, yeah. All you got to do is reach out and yeah. touch yeah. the hem of my garment. Oh, yeah. He said, listen, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Yeah. I'm here for you. Amen. I got God in my view, beloved. Yeah. Amen. That's what we need today. Long Amen. for him. Amen. 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 I'm young, I'm learning, I'm yearning, and aching. Amen. Why? Because God made a promise. Oh, yeah. God is not man. He can't break it. That's and God right. said, listen, if you seek me, That's you'll right. find me. Yeah. Uh -huh. You got to seek me. You got to act like you want to. Uh -huh. Oh, yes, sir. This is a track meet, if you will. Yeah. We're still in a race. You got to act like you want to win. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. You got to act like you want to win. Yeah. And when you want to win, you'll do whatever it takes necessary yeah. Yeah. to 
follow that. Amen.